When last we spoke, you saw a very sad bow. This is the bow that John from Arizona made and sent to me, beautiful, made out of salt cedar, a beautiful little 54 inch tip to tip, flat bow, but I drew it too far. I could say I did it on purpose, just because in my mind, the back of my mind, my subconscious wanted to send you back this thing, and I didn't feel right taking this beautiful piece of art, which it really is. If you were to see this close up, you'd see just the, the gentle sweeps and the graceful curves of the fades going into the handle, um, how he rounded this off during the tillering process, the slight ganks, you can see it's a snaky ball. And, and so my subconscious played a trick on us, forcing us to do something. But first, we need a theme song. It's going to balance off my, my, my crummy production methods. Ah, take this. This is the mystery song. Gibson, let's get on to this. Now, how, how many times if you're a bow maker have you drawn something back way too far, which I did. I don't know what I was thinking. It was before my coffee and it's just poof. It blew apart into two nice pieces. Usually, um, if you're a bow breakist like I am, you get a small one back here and then this piece and this piece. It usually breaks into three. But this one happened to just break cleanly in two. And I can tell that this is a good bow wood by how it broke. Some bow woods will make a bow that when you draw it back too far, it'll just kind of go out with a whimper. It'll start, uh, say, bending badly and just kind of uh, uh, drama here. But this one was crisp, which is a good sign. You have to get that right, like that. Um, and so it's worth saving. It was a beautiful fracture, which means it was... Uh, on the belly side broke, it's hard to see, and I'll do a close-up up here, and then on the back side, down here, a nice, which this is important, not so much on the tensional side, but on the compression side, almost straight across. And so, when I fix it, under compression, it's going to have like these two things pushing against. It was a nice ledge, and then a nice long straight piece, so it'll get, uh, give a good bond with the glue, and then up here, which doesn't really matter because again the sinew is going to take it. Now when I glued it together I could have used tight bond. I could have used hide glue or sinew scrap glue, natural glue that I produce, but I used my secret weapon. I used Gorilla Glue which is a urethane. You get one side wet, it reacts with, with dampness with water, and then you, you smear a thin layer of Gorilla Glue on the other side and you stick it together. In this case, I used Gorilla Glue because Gorilla Glue will foam and it'll, it'll like establish a beachhead and then it'll foam some more and go further into um, enemy territory and then establish that and then foam some more. So it makes a very strong chain. I go a step farther too. I'm going kind of out of order here. Let me go back into order. Water on one side of the break, Gorilla Glue on the other, stick it together. And in this case, I wanted it to, to mend. I'm having a really hard time. If you can't see it, it's kind of in here. Then that's understandable because it went together nicely. Took my rubber mallet, bam, 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 and drove those, those tendrils of bonus together. And then, not only did I just wrap it, but I'll wrap it under pressure because when Gorilla Glue is able just to expand, it makes this foamy kind of non-dense stuff. But if it's under pressure, it'll make a very hard, a hard material. And so I wrapped it tight with plastic, so it wouldn't stick to plastic, and then wrapped it with a bowstring really tight. Let it sit a bit, and on the, where is it? You can see a faint white line here. 
but it mended beautifully, so there's going to be no issues with this. It's like starting a sinew process with a brand new bow. I shouldn't be touching it with my hands because I don't want to get any hand oil on here, but I'll wash it off with uh, a strong detergent water. He had a true oil finish on this. And I didn't want to like sand too much because I didn't want to basically lighten the bow retiller it. Although with the sinew, it's going to add some poundage to it. On the back, just minor scraping at 80 grit. What I want to do is finish that up. I've got a Dremel, a Dremel tool, and a wire wheel just to kind of, I think, open it up. Prior to sizing, you want to have like a glue layer on here before you stick your sinew. I'm going to put it over a tea kettle that's steaming. I'm going to steam this stuff. Hopefully it'll open stuff up, maybe, I don't know, loosen some residual true oil. Anyway, that'll hopefully give me more purchase, more ability for that high glue to soak in here. And You know, on a, on a hot bowl, the high glue isn't going to gel as much, so it has a chance to soak in. So that should be okay. Now, a lot of people, I get, I get this comment on my videos often that I've never seen you back. Um, I, in paraphrasing, I'm putting words into your mind, but it's probably true. I'm intimidated by seeing you. So what I have are the eight deer tendons. I'm going to do, this is going to be a four deer bow. Four Achilles tendons from one deer, four from the other. Eight are going to work. And I think that Phil sent me this. These are dried, um, this is dried flakes of probably sinew scrap glue. You can take your scraps and then, then boil them down, simmer them down, and then put them in a shallow pan and dry them. I'm going to use this. I know that that's some kind of glue. I don't think it's hide glue because who's going to boil rabbit skins in their, in their house? Chances are, if you're a bow maker, you're going to boil the scraps from this stuff. Okay, so this is the test. If you are one of those who, say, have tried to repair bows, or you were always scared to make a sinew back bow due to the sinew work. Here's a test. Okay. Yes or no? Are you able to procure these either from Roadkill, Deer You Hunted, or eBay, or Mike Yancey at Pine Hollow Longbows? If you answered yes, um, progress to the next question. Are you able to, and this is most simulated by one of those sausage things that you can buy at a gas station near the counter, the little plastic thing with the little grabbers that I never use, but my hands are clean. Would you be able to pound one of those into oblivion with a hammer? If you answered yes, move on to the next question. Would you be able to take a bundle of fibers? I can't think of any other thing, you know, the gas station sausage um, is kind of like this, but can you pull those into fibers, little hairy fibers? I'm going to answer for you. Yes, you can. And the last one, is the application process of this end bow highly technical? Yes or no? Could you glue yarn to a tongue depressor? If you answered yes, you too have can uh, have the ability to send you back a bow, and no excuses, no excuses. Hopefully, if I do anything here on my modest little channel, is to challenge you to answer the mystery song, of course, on the Gibson. And the next is to like break through that, that inertia, that, that thing that is stopping you from doing something as simple as sinew backing. Yes, it takes some skill to put down a nice layer of sinew that doesn't have separations um, where you can see the wood after it dries. But does that affect how well that sinew works? No, it does not. You do not have to have showroom picture finish of sinew on here for it to work just as well as a rough, cobbled together looking sinew job. The stuff glues together well, doesn't care if it's pretty to work, not important. And so, get off your duff. I'm sorry to use such rough, such rough language on here. Get off your duff, and if you're a bow maker, you get some of this, even if you have to order it on eBay. I would suggest Mike, Ho Mike Yancey at Pine Hollow Longbows. It might be a little more expensive, but you're guaranteed that you're going to get nice long ones instead of these short ones that sometimes you get on eBay. Start pounding them. Get your hammer out. Find a, a cement floor or a big rack or two racks and pound them between the two racks. And even though you don't have a bow at this point in time, if you were to tell yourself 
that you are going to only pound one of these into bits and separate the fibers. You do that one a day. That's 45 minutes out of your life. And just do it every single day. You can accumulate enough over the course of a week or two weeks or maybe that's your nightly routine. You'll have enough to send you back bows. Really, if you follow the steps as far as don't touch the thing after you prepare it, you know, with your greasy hands, I'm going to wash it with detergent so it doesn't matter. Um, I forgot what I'm going to say. Yeah, if you can glue a yarn to a tongue depressor, you can certainly glue sinew to the back of a bow. That is that. That is that. Extra points for naming the mystery song. Many extra points for, for just do it. Do it. Do it. Don't make me have to make all the sinew bows that you guys use. Contribute. That's it. Thank you. I gotta get ready for orchestra now. <laughs>